This is a Black Talk Radio News Brief, The Sneaker Game, Black Dollars Make White Profits, written and produced by Scotty Reed. In 2021 the research company Statista reported that the total 2020 revenue for the global athletic shoe market was valued around $70 billion annually. The market was forecast to reach a value of $102 billion by 2025. Sneakers as they're popularly known in the United States, became a fashion staple in the black community around the late 1970s and 1980s owing their growing popularity in part to the early interactions of hip-hop culture. Not only did break dancers, an athletic form of dancing that included elements of gymnastics, need comfortable shoes to perform but matching the shoes to an outfit, a fashion statement was just as important to the performers. In the mid-1980s came along one Michael Jeffrey Jordan, who had one of the best NBA careers of his era, and became arguably the first global influencer long before the age of social media. Nike's media campaigns really leaned into a proud black identity, without overtly showing their hand, by telling everyone to just be like Mike, a black man in a white-dominated society, who shut up and dribbled. It helped that Jordan and the man was not one to wade into the social-political sphere, once quipping that Republicans buy shoes too when asked to endorse the black Democrat Harvey Gantt, the former mayor of Charlotte, North Carolina, who hoped to defeat the lifelong white supremacist, Senator Jesse Helms. Another bonus for Nike was that Jordan the man would likely not be raising any issues with Nike's labor practices let alone concern himself about where the Jordan sneakers were manufactured. Nike's iconic commercials, one starring, directed, and produced by famed black film director Spike Lee, at the peak of his popularity, Lee was somewhat of a black cultural icon in the 80s, and is still known as a basketball superfan, the media campaigns made Nike's Jordan's brand, its signature shoe, driving the majority of its sales and thus profits of the company. Is it the short socks? No, Mars. Money's gotta be the shoes! 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 shoes. You sure it's not the shoes? I'm sure, Mars. What about the shoes? No, Mars. Money's gotta be the shoes! Sneakers are still a foundation of black fashion trends, so it's logical that black consumers are still the foundation of sneaker purchases thus driving the profits for the top global corporate brands like Adidas, Converse, Nike, and Reebok. However, most if not all manufacturing is done in countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, and China. The dollars the black American consumer spends on these products often do not turn into employment opportunities for the communities where they are geographically located. Corporations have long been in the practice of outsourcing manufacturing jobs, where the corporations contract with factories in foreign countries, where employers pay workers what would be considered slave wages in the U.S., wages well below the ridiculously low U.S. federal minimum wage. Enter the COVID-19 pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic is having an impact despite the 2020 sales. COVID-19 did not arrive in the United States until the last two months of the calendar year. CNBC reports the sneaker giant Nike, the main supplier to Dick's Sporting Goods, a national retailer, is having supply chain issues. The same issues are also affecting other industries that rely on outsourced manufacturing. Despite the upward global trend in the demand for sneakers, with projected sales crossing the 100 billion per year mark, Nike lowered its internal fiscal 2022 outlook due to the disruption in the global supply chain. Longer transit times, Labor shortages abroad with prolonged production shutdowns in Vietnam, a major player in the manufacturing of Nike brand shoes. CNBC also reported that in a recent conference call, Nike Chief Financial Officer Matt Friend said the company anticipates its entire business will see short-term inventory shortages over the next few quarters. It stands to reason that if the majority of the sneakers were manufactured in the United States, it is likely that would alleviate the pressure on the not being able to meet demand because of a disrupted global supply chain. Focusing specifically on black Americans, there doesn't seem to be many opportunities in retail ownership, which is dominated by national retail chains. NBC News, in a report about the $70 billion generated by sneakers last year, says that black retailers saw little of that. They write, black culture and influence made athleisure a phenomenon, but only a handful of black retail owners are benefiting from the trend. Only 5% of sneaker retailers in the United States are black U.S. citizens. It's a white boys club, like most things, said James Whitner, referring to the lack of black retail ownership. Mr. Whitner is a rare black man in retail who has carved out a successful niche with boutique apparel and sneakers stores in several cities. He also said that there are people aware of it, but their privilege doesn't force them to have to change it. When it comes to sneakers, the industry shows that black so-called dollars spent do not translate into much by way of ownership and employment opportunities. 
whenever a new black-owned sneaker company does come along, like the big baller brand launched by U.S. entrepreneur La Varball, the business is, like the big corporate brands reliant on the same exploitive global supply chain and may generate individual wealth for a family but contributes nothing but capitalist symbolism to the wider African diaspora in the United States. Black Americans are the number one consumers of a $70 billion a year sneaker industry, and not one shoe is being manufactured in any U.S. city or rural town for that matter. If they organized and had the inclination, the U.S. black consumer base could boycott the industry until the sneakers are made not just in the USA, but specifically in urban working-class communities. One bright spot back in 2017, Fortune magazine reported that the number two U.S.-based sports apparel brand Under Armour debuted an initial line of apparel that was manufactured at the company's new innovation center in Baltimore. And that Under Armour and other athletic brands are beginning to experiment with U.S.-based manufacturing by tinkering with limited-run collections meant to test both the process and the prices that customers are willing to pay for domestically made goods. Perhaps due to the supply issues brought on by the global coronavirus pandemic, big brands will be pushed to speed up their plans for domestic manufacturing in the U.S., often the number one consumers of their products. This has been a Black Talk Radio News Brief. To support programming on blacktalkradionetwork.com, make a donation today to the Black Talk Media Project.